Good afternoon, JD. Good afternoon, Darren. How are y'all? We're great. What were you thinking you were going to be talking about today when you woke up? We've got a new student orientation for our student athletes. So we had (laughs) that with them this morning and we'll meet with their parents this evening talking about the great year the Aztecs had last year. We had a 3.17 GPA for all our students this past spring. So we're getting it done in the classroom. We have a great life skills program. We're opening a new football stadium, (laughs) that kind of stuff, the stuff we've been talking about a lot lately. Absolutely. Just boilerplate stuff here heading in the 4th of July weekend, right? Nothing too seismic, nothing earth shattering could possibly happen before you enjoyed your holiday weekend, right? Correct. By the way, speaking of, I drive past that stadium every single day. What's going on with the video boards? I'm a little distracted when I'm on the 15 freeway and I can see things actually on the video boards from the 15, J.D. Yeah, honestly, the first day we turned them on, somebody told me they were on the 8 and they nearly crashed. <laughs> we're literally, we're going to cause a wreck. On, we're going to call a, cause a pileup somewhere uh, with the video boards. But, yeah, we're just testing. I was in the other day. The sound system was going. It was awesome. Um, so, yeah, I mean, again, we are, you know, we're investing in our program and we are building what will be the best or at least on par with any other stadium in this country, pro or college, from an experience standpoint. It will open in San Diego on September 3rd. Are you a Jimmy Buffett fan, J.D.? I am, I am a parrot head. I had seen Jimmy Buffett 10 times before I moved to Washington State in 2001. I haven't seen him since because he doesn't come out this way that often. The one time he was here, I was traveling with football. So I will I will be in town for the concert on the 22nd. Well, that's good news. See, that's the benefit of being the athletic director and opening up a new stadium. You just get to book the acts that you want to see. <laughs> that, I, I will say this. I, I definitely um, – was very supportive when they brought Buffett forward as uh, someone to open the new stadium. All right, John David Wicker's joining us. He's the athletic director at San Diego State. Enough of the foreplay. Marty says move on, get to the the good stuff. USC and UCLA, J.D., they're planning to move from the Pac-12 to the Big Ten. An announcement could be any minute now, and this is very, very real. This is is a story that has incredible traction and roots. Uh, Your reaction just to, to what's happening here, the closest, geographically speaking, Power five programs up the road in Los Angeles are going to jump to the Big Ten. What are your thoughts? Um, obviously, you know, I guess I'm surprised, although in the world of college athletics right now, I'm, I'm always surprised when I can be surprised. So, uh, you know, have heard, you know, over time that SC has always, you know, looked other ways longingly and that it might be a thing. Um, I think the UCLA piece probably surprises me a little more. Um, And like you talked about earlier, the travel piece, I've, you know, have definitely, you know, reached out to some folks and they're like, yes, it's real, it's happening. The discussions, at least, I've heard it's still in the discussion phase um, and that it was all sports. And that's, you know, definitely something to think about is, you know, the travel for, you know, all of your sports to to get out there. So their travel budget will definitely go up because they'll charter everything. Well, the travel budget's going to go up, but you know if these reports are accurate, their income's going to go up exponentially as well because jumping to the Big Ten apparently is, is going to lead to a heck of a lot more money than they're currently making in the Pac-12, so it sounds like they got it covered. Yeah, no, I mean, like I said, they'll be able to cover their charter budget because, I mean, again, you'll be the Big Ten. You'll now have the New York City, the Chicago, the Los Angeles, the Washington, D.C., uh, market, so you've got, I don't know where D.C. falls, D.C., DC Baltimore, but probably top ten. So, But you've probably got the top three markets in the country. So that $80 million number you hear may you know, approach 90 to $100 million. J.D. Wicker joining us on Extra 1360. Uh, obviously, you cannot tell us indelibly what it means to San Diego State, but what, what could this potentially mean for San Diego State University? I, I don't think it, it – it doesn't necessarily change anything that we've been doing. We've been, you know, talking about this for a while. We are going to, you know, do all that we can to grow San Diego State, our athletic department, and the institution to make us the best that we can possibly be. We're obviously, you know, we're showing that we're putting the resources behind our athletic programs with opening, you know, a stadium that, you know, is going to benefit everybody. It really benefits football, but – our soccers will play there this fall. Lacrosse will play there. Money coming back to the department. 
uh, will help all of our sports continue to grow. You know, we won five conference championships last year. We've won 55 since the 12-13 year. Uh, our, you know, so we, we're the class of the Mountain West Conference right now. We're well positioned uh, to be whatever the next iteration of the NCAA, the Pac-12, the Big 12, uh, whatever that might be. We're well positioned. Academically, the institution is growing. You know, our, our goal is to be an R1, a Research One institution. We feel like that's achievable in the next year or two. And what we're doing in Mission Valley uh, to grow um, research and other elements that are important um, to, you know, to gain uh, an R1 status, that's going to you know, continue to, to move exponentially over the next 10 to 15 years. And so we're, we're well positioned to be very successful at the next level, whatever that is of, you know, NCAA athletics. Um, so, uh, you know, I think things have, you know, dynamics have changed to a certain extent. And, um, you know, we bring a lot to the table that we may not have brought in the past, and that made it a little easier to say, well, we don't need them. Have you um, at all today been on the phones? I, I you know, have you been uh, out there Potentially, you know, things move very quickly in, in college sports, J.D. As you know, I mean, this thing is expected to go down potentially by the end of the day or the end of the week. Um, has your, your morning been communicating with others and, and, you know, poking around potentially about your own future in the Mountain West or beyond? Well, I am communicating with you right now, so no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, I've had, you know, I've talked with various folks, one more than anything, just to see how much legitimacy it was to the reports that were coming out. And obviously, uh, you know, uh, Wilner's very plugged in. Colin Coward even had something to say on Twitter, but not really saying anything. How do you say something without saying something? Um, so it's, it's been a lot of that, just kind of, you know, and then people, again, with just the, I think, the shock of it, um, you know, having – you know, discussions more about would they really do it, would they really take all of their sports and that type of thing, and, you know, kind of need to see if it actually happens. I mean, the you know, does the UC system step in and say, hey, UCLA, we don't know if this is in the best interest of, you know, the UC system, SC being a private, they can kind of do what they want to, but I don't know how the UC system uh, might weigh into this or not, and, you know, what are, what's Cal thinking? So there's still some, some things that have to happen. Because, uh, again, my understanding is talking to people, it's, you know, there's discussions, um, not to say that something couldn't be signed off on today or later this week. So I think we just we kind of wait to see how that plays out and, you know, continue uh, reaching out to folks and just seeing what they're hearing. So let me just be as direct as possible here, J.D. Do you want to be considered for membership in the Pac-12? I want to be, one, you know, we're very happy with our Mountain West Conference partnership right now and all that we do. And my goal is to be best positioned in whatever the future of collegiate athletics is. I mean, obviously, I just got back from a convention in Vegas where we spent an hour and a half with the transformation with members of the transformation committee talking about what that looks like. You know, with NIL, there's, you know, a court case. And the Third Circuit of Pennsylvania, uh, Johnson versus the NCAA, which nobody really talks about, but uh, they're suing for student athletes to be paid minimum wage, like a student worker on campus. Um, and people are really concerned about that one. So more than anything, it's most important for us to be well positioned for that next iteration of the NCAA. And if that's being in the Pac-12 or the Big 12 or – some new hybrid conference or the Mountain West Conference absorbs some schools, then that's where we want to be. Okay, so see, you brought up Big 12. I hadn't even mentioned that yet. I'm just thinking out loud about the Arizona schools. Maybe all of a sudden this presents an opportunity for them to decide geographically speaking or the Big 12 geographically speaking, hey, let's scoop those two up and let's just keep going west of the Pacific Ocean. It's almost impossible, right, to predict what could be next in this game of dominoes. I'm, I'm reading right now about a potential merger of the Pac-12 and the Big 12, and I don't, I don't know what that would mean for y'all, but I suppose you know that's something that, that you have to consider and figure out what it does mean for SDSU. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the, the big things for the, the Big 12, obviously I think they just settled on the four schools coming in mm -hmm. when they would arrive, but do they now present an impediment to what the Big 12 might want to do? And the Big 12 just announced their new commissioner two days ago, Brett <laughs> Yormark, who – 
has no collegiate athletics experience, so he's going to be walking into something, and he's going to have a lot of, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot to intake to understand everything and, you know, kind of figure out what they want their next move to be. So lots of um, – Still a lot of water to go under the bridge. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a similar situation to the Pac-12 commissioner who just celebrated one year on the job like two days ago. Yep. No, he. I think he walked into the CFP discussion and thought that was challenging. So I'm <laughs> sure today it's a little different. You know, J.D., uh, you, you did a, a great job earlier talking about all the things that San Diego State has going for it now. And if I were an Aztec fan, and as somebody who is a fan of the, the programs and certainly the people in the program, you know, that it's a, it's something to be proud of. You know, oftentimes we hear this, just to, to simplify it, you know, that at some point, especially in college football, it's going to just be a question of haves and have-nots. And, and you know, the haves will be off playing one sport, and the have-nots, I suppose, for lack of a better phrase, will be, you know, doing their thing on their own. And I just wonder, you know, simplifying it into those terms, what do you see San Diego State being? You know, if, if it's as simple as like a have or a have-not kind of conversation, how do you see San Diego State fitting into that? Well, I mean, I- I think we're going to be a have. Um, I also think, you know, we're consistently beating teams with half the budget that those teams have or less. There's a lot of talent out there. Um, And we've had this discussion because, you know, right now they're talking about from a transformation committee standpoint, and, you know, sorry to get in the weeds a little bit, but do they cap a roster with the number of people you can have, but you get to decide how many scholarships you want to give. So let's say football is 115 on the roster, and you can give 115 scholarships if you want to. But the problem is in this day and age, kids don't want to sit on the bench and wait for their turn. They're gonna, if they don't get their turn immediately, they're going into the transfer portal to go somewhere else to play. So there's still a lot of talent out there. Um, you know, We obviously need to continue improving what we're able to offer to the student athlete beyond the educational piece. Again, the football stadium is going to be a huge get for us. Uh, you know, but continuing to do all of those things for our student athletes, I, you know, I certainly expect us to be a have going forward. Yeah, and, and that football stadium, by the way, for anybody that thinks, you know, hey, if you're going to be in one of those have kind of conversations or be in a Pac-12 or be in a Big 12, uh, the size of it is, is limiting it in some capacity, J.D. I don't know that that – that is or isn't something that you all have considered. I know we've talked about expansion and we've talked about other features for Snapdragon Stadium, but just in terms of, of what it is and the size of it today, uh, that for you wouldn't be something that anybody in a different conference would look at and, and turn from? No, I don't think so. Um, again, it's going to be a, a great experience, and we do have the opportunity on a temporary basis to expand if we need to. Um, but, you know, you've got other people that are downsizing, you know, or want to downsize their stadiums or they're taking away the, you know, the seats that generate the least amount of ROI and turning those into some type of, you know, social area and things like that. So I don't think stadium size is going to be an issue. You look at the revenue we're going to generate out of the stadium uh, and what that experience is going to be, I, I think we're fine. Yeah, market size as well. So what's next for you? So what do you do? Like, do you, do you get on the phone and talk to these other commissioners and these other school presidents and ADs? Yeah, you know, we'll continue to, um, you know, test the market, if you will. We'll continue having conversations with people about what's best for San Diego State and what's, um, you know, what's going to be best moving forward uh, into the future, because again, it's a it's a very dynamic future. Over the next year, with the transformation committee at the NCAA level, you know the NCAA has a chance to look very different this time next year, just based on you know rules, what you're allowed to do, you know the different areas that they're going to open up, and potentially recruiting, coaching staff sizes, um, you know what you need to do to be a Division One member. So uh, there's a there's a lot to survey at this point. Lastly, uh, I think you're scheduled to play UCLA next season. Is there is there any anything changing on your end with regards to the scheduling of that game? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Again, this is stay you tuned. Know, uh, pretty fresh, and they're still in the Pac-12 today. So uh, the expectation is we'll we'll keep that game, and there's a substantial buyout if we don't keep the game. Nice. Well, what would you prefer? Uh, I would prefer to play the game, I always. Too. I would, too. J.D., thank you for being available to us. All right, Darren, appreciate it much. Y'all have a uh, good day, and please have a happy and a safe July 4th. Go Aztecs. Thank you. J.D. Wicker, happy and safe July 4th. Go Aztecs.